The light bulb moment when I decided I'm going to be a scientist was when my teacher, biology teacher, said that cats landed on their feet. I had a cat called Tabby and I was like, ah, oh, can't wait to get home. My brother opened the window and I let go of her legs. So the science of cats is that they can churn their bodies 180 degrees. So as Tabby was let go, first thing she did was turn her head, you could see the ground, then she turned her front paws and her back paws and landed softly on the ground. Didn't see her for a day or two, but by then I was like, I'm gonna be a scientist. My name is Carol Quashie Williams. I'm an agricultural and environmental scientist and entomologist, which is a study of bugs. Caterpillars, look, That's, look. Wow, hey. look at the caterpillars. And I'm passionate about passing skills in science, technology, engineering and maths, or STEM, to students. I'm from Eastville in Bristol, in England. My grandfather in Jamaica was a, um, a farmer, and the thought of growing product produce, um, agriculture, in a sustainable way and looking after the environment, I was like very passionate about that. So at uni, I went to Newcastle Uni, we talked about the fact that 90% of a crop could be lost from the time you put it in the ground to when you harvest it, especially from insects. I ended up going to Samoa and managing a fruit fly project and I met my husband playing soccer and he just happened to be an Aussie, an Australian, and he was working over there as an expat who happened to live in Canberra. Where I live in Canberra, is a um, suburb called Farrah, named after William James Farrah, who was a famous agriculturalist. So I remember thinking, this is clearly the suburb for me. And I love the fact that we've got nature all around us. You wouldn't know that you're actually in the middle of the capital city. I started working or helping at Farrah Primary School in 2005. When my son was in year one, so I've got a son and a daughter, my daughter's the younger one. When she was getting ready to leave in year six, Farrah was happy for me to continue working with um, the teachers. And so I joined the STEM Professionals in Schools programme. So I've been connected to Farrah for almost 20 years now. And on their website, they call me their scientist in residence, which is really lovely. And when I did 10 years, they revealed the a mosaic that they've made for me. My two main schools are Farah and Namaji. Namaji is like the largest Stephanie Alexander kitchen garden in Canberra. We've got four massive gardens. I visit uh, once a fortnight. We go into the field and we'll look at what's growing. We start the children off growing the seeds. Um, tending the plants, harvesting the produce, trying the produce fresh, and also getting to cook with the produce. And then any waste is then composted, that becomes great compost, which is then returned to the plants, to the fields, where we can then grow. So they get to see the whole cycle, which is like awesome. Just crumbly, perfect, just a more mature compost, and all the worms, so this is just right to go onto a garden. So I've taught them that we do the crop rotations to reduce pest and disease incidents and also to add nutrients to the gardens. Our results from the show, yeah. Did anyone go to the show this weekend? I wanted to, but I didn't get to. Oh, OK. We're entering produce into the Canberra show. It's the fourth year that um, we've won. Champions! We'd never won Best in Show ribbons. This is the first time we've Best in Show. So, so have you seen our apples over there? Yeah. So that one is the wow, best fruit. That looks really so good. So even the open session, so the adults couldn't produce something as good as what Namaji did. Oh, very yeah. So this morning we harvest our peaches. And we're going to cut these open and have a look at the beautiful flesh inside. One year we were collecting peaches because we were going to be making peach jam. One of the students said to the teacher, oh, miss, there's maggots in this fruit. 
And I said to the teacher, hey, look, you know, living things, life cycle, part of the curriculum. Next week, we'll have pupae. And the week after, we should have the adults emerging. We went online and we had a look at how to um, identify fruit fly. And we thought, oh, it looks like Queensland fruit fly. That was the beginning of um, the Queensland fruit fly moving further south. Every four years, they have a fruit fly symposium. So I wrote a paper about inspiring the next generation of fruit fly entomologists, and the um, paper got accepted. And I went to uh, Mexico, and I won a prize for best presentation. And I came back and I said to the kids, hey, look, because of you, I, um, you know, I've won this prize. It's a past student who was in that fruit fly rearing class is now an agronomist. So I like to think that, yep, it was all because of those manky, <laughs> manky peaches or maggoty peaches that um, got him on his path. I currently work at the Department of Agriculture, Fisheries and Forestry. One of the projects I'd been doing at the department had been looking at our top 40 national priority plant pests. So I thought maybe it could be a STEM project. We could actually produce a card pack where we'd have 52 cards, a different pest on every card. Each of the kids will have a national priority plant pest and they'll get to investigate this pest and find out how many countries a pest is in, what do they feed on. You can play a game with the stats on the cards, which is a good way to quickly learn which of the worst pests. I have energy, which is 246.9. And then the following year was the International Year of Fruit and Vegetables. And I thought, let's make art, let's make it a STAM project. And we'll get the kids drawing all these fruit and vegetables. We did fruit flies in 2022, and those cards were given out at the National Symposium of Fruit Flies. Last year, we worked on butterflies and moths cards. We're getting those produced probably this year. What can you find? I saw some pear slugs. Have a look, see if you can find anything. So they've made this damage. Oh, what have you found? And one of my teachers said to me when she was growing up, all the scientists she knew were like old white guys in lab coats. So to have a woman, someone of cultural and linguistically diverse background is inspiring for children I hope that in the future there'll be children who go, oh, remember that lady who taught us all about science and we'd be in the garden and she'd tell us what bugs these were. So I'm hoping that will inspire them to become an entomologist. That's my plan. I'm always saying to kids, you know, oh, maybe this will be my next generation of entos. <laughs>